Okay, so this is episode 13. This is going to be going over some kind of like mathsy stuff uh, and just stuff I've missed out and rounding and a couple of little tricks and stuff like that. So, first I'm going to be showing you about constants. Um, a constant is a variable that's not really a variable because uh, it doesn't vary, it's constant, it doesn't change. So, an uh, example of a constant is uh, in the math class math dot pi you can see if you put a dot math dot pi you can see it's this like square symbol with two lines on it and it's it's a value that's always there it never gets changed um, so to make a constant you do const and then let's make speed of light um, and just for jokes I don't know what it is exactly so it's about three just for jokes I know it's obviously a lot higher than that uh, in fact there's no units so I guess that could be true depending on how you scale it. So other than generally science stuff, there's other imp implications for constants too. So what it allows you to do is if you set up a constant before you start your project or that block of code, you set up your constant. If you use the constant, then let's say if you want to change it later on, you can be like, oh, I can just change one constant rather than changing every little thing inside your code. So let's say for a game you have um, m speed, which stands for movement speed. Um, so and obviously you need to set an initial value because it can't be changed upon execution. Uh, so it's hard coded number which you assign to a word. Um, so movement speed eight, let's say. There's no units or anything. So I'm just gonna make a variable uh, dim moving as boolean and dim location as integer just to show some examples so if you do if moving uh, then and you don't have to put equals true you can if you want but this will equal true so you don't need to do that um, else so if it's not moving then it'll be here um, so So you would say location plus equals um, m speed. Now let's say if that should be running, by the way. Uh, so if running, uh, and this should be running then, then you want it to go faster. You might think, oh, but then I need to change this or something. So what you can do, you can say location plus equals m speed times by uh, Four, so you, that's saying you've run four times faster than your walk. Um, so then, when you change this, it'll scale both. Um, if you want, if you having to do this for all directions, up, down, left, right, or something, depends what you're making. Um, so if you do const um, ratio, you probably should put a bit more description on that. Is equal to um, 3.2 and then you can just put times by ratio and there we are so that's handled if you're running you do this speed if you're walking you do this speed and yeah and this would have to be called like every tick or something it's just a game anyway we're not making a game um so i'm going to talk about the not operator um so it, let's say if you wanted to do the opposite first if you do not running that means it's false so this is true but then you're knotting it, so it's the opposite. So this now means false, which means you would now need to swap it this way, um, which would be a bit neater. So you might want to do uh, walking first and running second. You know, seems to be a more sensible order. Um, so you can use the not keyword. So what you can do, you can knot a whole statement. So if you had loads of stuff in here like this and then you do that, then everything in here will be inverted. So if this whole statement here, you can have multiple statements and ands and ors inside here. Um, whatever the outcome of all those statements is, you can knot the whole thing with just knot and brackets. Um, another use for a the knot statement is to do a toggle. Now, if you want to toggle running, you can't do running dot toggle 
Uh, one thing you could do is say if running equals true, then it equals false. If running equals false, then make it true. But that's a bit tedious. What you can do is say running is equal to not running. So it's the only statement which you can use not in this statement, but you can use it in. Um, in fact, no, I think you could use both ands and stuff inside this. Ignore me. Um, but yeah, what this does, it says it's equal to its previous opposite. Um, so if it's equal to false, it make it equal to true. So that's another use for the not statement. Um, so yeah. Um, the other thing I want to show you is the um, XOR statement. So if I make a variable dim a as boolean, not that. Uh, there we are. And I'm just going to do b on the same line, be crappy. Um, and get rid of all this. So if a XOR b, then. Um, so what this is saying is. If you're, uh, in fact, I've got a truth table here. I should do, yeah. So I've got a truth table here. So these are the inputs um, here. So if they're both off, the output's off. If the one's on, the output's on. If they're both on, the output's off. So it's an OR gate here, but then the last bit is uh, flipped or reversed or inverted, whatever you want to call it. Um, so only if one of them is true but not both of them will this uh, activate. So that's basically the XOR statement. I don't think there's any point in running that. Um, one thing you may have saw me do when I was highlighting it is the box selection which is this. So instead of highlighting things like this you can do a box selection. Now the way you do that is hold shift and alt at the same time and then drag. Now this is really great for doing things on what like at once so as to console dot right line. Predictions don't show up when you're doing this but yeah. Hello world. Um like that. And now you can see I've put the O on purpose wrong. I did actually put this on purpose. <laughs> Um, then I can just change it like that. If I want to make this console.right, I can do box selection, which is shift not again, delete things like that. And if I want to copy and paste something, so if I want to write the word write hello world a million times, you copy one line and then you paste it across multiple. You don't copy multiple. If I copy this and now do box selection, uh, like paste it like that's uh, by example. If I did um, that, it kind of it's not right as you can see. It's kind of messed up, and it's stuck in it for a loop. Okay, so I don't know if actually VB wants a capital M or not. I'm not sure if it's bothered. Um, so that's basically the box selection. The next thing I want to show you is go back over the rounding. Um, so if I do console dot right line here and then do a console dot read line to make sure it doesn't close. And inside the console dot right line if I put math dot um floor, I've told you about this before, but what I want to cover is what if it's a negative number? So let's say negative four point three. What will this do? Now what it will do is go down and if it's a negative number, down is still down. Then it go to minus five like that. So if you do that, it will still go to minus five. And I'm using new Visual Studio, and it takes a while to um, compile compared to the old one. I might downgrade <laughs> just for these quick videos at least. Um, similarly, if you do ceiling, uh, then it will round up, as in uh, up, as in towards infinity. So. Um, this would round to minus 4 and if this is a 3 this would also round to minus 4 now what I'm trying to say is there's another one that I've missed out this is truncate I think it's pronounced um, so what this does I'll put a comment here if uh, positive and maybe that works 
if positive, then uh, floor. Else uh, negative, then ceiling. Um, which is basically round towards zero. So that's basically what that does. So if you get a number, let's say 4.8, and this will go to 4. Like so, if I get minus 4.8, then this should also round to minus 4. Um, so that's basically that. Um, which leads on to the next thing, which is integer division. So if I was to do 8 and then do backslash 2, then it's to do integer division. Um, so what this does, it truncates the, I hope I'm saying that right, the um, first one, it truncates the second one, and it truncates the output. Um, so if I was to do 4.8, 8.8, then it would uh, still do 4. Um, so to show it truncates the output, if I do th um, 1 backslash 3, then this should be 0 0.3 recurring, then it will go down to um, 0. If I was to do minus 1 over 3, it should go to 0 still. Um, so yeah, that's truncating it. If I also do 2, that's showing you it's not just rounding it, then it's actually flooring it. But if I to do minus 2, it would still um, go to 0, hopefully, yeah. So yeah, that's into division. So that's basically that. Um, the final thing I want to show you is um, the ASCII conversion from uh, character to um, to number and backwards as well. So dim C as char is equal to um, letter A. Uh, lowercase a, that should be 65 in ASCII. So what you can do, I always get it mixed up, I think it's ask, yeah. Uh, ask returns an integer. So this means you input a char, which is C, and it will return an integer value for the ASCII. So I know that is 65. Uh, lowercase is um, 97, I think, yeah. Um, so what if you want to do this in reverse, you can simply do dim i as integer and then do uh, chr which finds the um, the code, the character represented by the value i. Now I don't actually need to do integer because ASCII only has a byte amount of characters so I can just do byte. And some languages like C++, Byte, and Char are the same thing um, for this reason. But um, so if I was to do 66, that should be B, like so, capital B. So that's just a quick thing. Uh, you might have saw Char W. I think that is Unicode, which means I should do integer here and although I know the console won't allow certain characters but that I'm sure it'll be Unicode and similarly if you do uh, ask W well that sounds like ASCII uh, I'm not sure about that guys I have to look that up but yeah just remember the ASCII and um, char because that's the most useful really because you don't you don't need to really deal with that. Um, so you can also use that for keyboard inputs and stuff like that.